everyone, this is Chelsea, and in today's video I'm going to be walking you through how to draw the big square pattern that we practice in our Occupational Specific Essential Skills class for sewing machine operation. So this is a really good pattern to practice before you sew it because it'll help with your hand-eye coordination um, and it'll also help you to familiarize yourself with how the pattern looks and also the measurements that are involved, which as you can see on this example that I've made here, the measurements are very similar to some of the other patterns that we've practiced in other videos because we're going to be using the quarter inch measurement again today. Alright, so let's jump into things. For this pattern, you're going to need a pencil and just like usual, I'm not using a pencil, I'm actually just using a marker um, because it shows up easier on the screen, but I definitely recommend that you use a pencil anytime you're practicing any of these patterns. You'll also need a ruler for measuring and you're going to need, of course, a piece of paper. Now, if you already have a piece of paper that is in a square shape, that's fantastic, you can use that. But I'm guessing that most people probably have paper that looks something like this. And so this is just an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, it's a rectangle. So I'm going to show you first how you can make this rectangle quickly into a square piece of paper. So just like we practice in class, Anytime we're doing a square pattern, we're going to want to use the edges of the paper to guide our pattern, which means we'll want a square piece of paper. So what we'll do is I'm going to take one of the corners of the paper here and I'm going to fold it at a diagonal so that this shorter edge here is going to be right along the longer edge over here. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to take this I'm going to fold it so that it's at a diagonal and so that that side here is lined up. Okay, And so you'll notice that my diagonal is going right from the corner edge here and going at a diagonal down. So I'm going to line it up as best as I can. You want to make sure that you make a really nice square because the nicer your square piece of paper is, the more square your pattern is going to be later on. And then you're going to press that down. There we go. And then for this pattern, you'll also need a pair of scissors because what you're going to do now is you're going to take your scissors and you're just going to cut off this extra piece that's sticking out right here, okay? So I would just take my scissors and cut, cut, cut along this edge. And then when you open up your paper, you're going to have something that looks like this. There we go. So this is my square piece of paper now that I'm going to use to demonstrate to you how to make the big squares. All right, so now let's get started with drawing our pattern. So as you can see, in the example that I showed you before, our back stitches are actually going at a little bit of a diagonal down, and the more squares you do, the longer the diagonal will be heading into the middle of the square. So that's what we're going to try to do today. And so you'll notice that my first back stitch that I've made here is about one inch down from the very top of the paper. So let's do that now. All right, so on my ruler, I'm just going to give you a quick reminder of a couple of the measurements that we're going to be using. First, I'm going to measure one inch down from the top. And if you remember one inch, if we start from the top of our ruler, the very beginning here, it's just going to be from the beginning notch, jumping all the way to where we have one full number here. So it's 16 notches all together, one full inch. And it doesn't have to be exactly one inch from the top. Um, that's just a good starting point that you can follow as a guide. Now, all of our other measurements are going to be one quarter inch apart. We're going to be making one quarter inch borders all the way around on our square. 
And so as a reminder, we can find one quarter inch by starting with our first tick. That's zero. And then I'm going to count one, two, three, four. Okay, so that's going to give us our quarter inch right there. Okay, so let's get started at the top here. And remember, we always start on the right side of our paper because if we were sewing this, we'd start on the right side as well. Now I'm just going to mark for myself where approximately one inch down is. I'm just gonna put a little dot there, okay, just a little indicator for myself. And then that way I know that when I measure in one quarter inch, I'm going to be measuring it at that dot. So I'm going to take my ruler now and I'm going to line it up where that little dot is that I made here. And then I'm going to find where my quarter inch mark is and I'm going to line that up with the edge of my paper. Okay, just like this. There we go, so I've got that quarter inch right here. And now I'm just going to make another marker for myself right here. There we go. So that's where my first back stitch is going to be. I'll even make it a little darker right now so that we know that that's where my start and my end point is. Now, the reason why I'm starting about an inch down instead of starting right in the corner up here is because when we sew this pattern, it's going to be a lot easier when we go all the way around and we come back up here. It's a lot easier to overlap the stitches like this. So if I were to start here and end here, it's going in the same direction. Whereas if I started up here, let's say right in the corner, well, now my starting stitches are going down, but my ending stitches would be going across this way. So it would make sort of this kind of shape. And we don't want that because it's very hard to get them to overlap properly. So this way they'll overlap and make a nice straight line. Okay, so let's continue with our measurements then. Now that I've got my first mark here. I then need to measure up from the bottom one quarter inch because remember our borders are going to be a quarter inch all the way around. So I'm going to take my ruler and again I'm going to find that quarter inch notch on my ruler and I'm going to put it down so that it lines up with the bottom of my paper. Okay just right here. And you can kind of estimate at first um, where it would be to be directly underneath this line because remember when we make our line later we're going to be drawing a straight line down like this. So you can estimate, you can put a mark right there and then you can also measure this way so going the other way just to make sure that it's a quarter inch in from the side as well. There we go, okay, and then you might have to adjust your mark a little bit, like I don't know if you can see there, but my mark is just a little bit too far off to the left. I'm going to have to move it over just slightly. There we go. So now, I don't know if you can see, let me just move that up a little closer for you. So the smaller dot here, that was my original dot that I made. And then I measured in one quarter inch from the side and I realized, oops, I made my mark a little bit too far to the left. So I made the bigger dot a little bit farther to the right. And so now it's at the right height and the right width away from the side. So I know that now when I'm drawing my line down, I'm going to be, there we go, I'm going to be aiming for this bigger dot right here. All right, and I'm going to do that for every step, every single time I make a new mark going around my square, I'm going to measure both up from the bottom and in from the side. Okay, so now remember whenever we do these patterns, we're not using our ruler to draw any of the lines because we're practicing our hand-eye coordination and so we're going to freehand it. So we're gonna make a freehand line starting with our back stitch here. 
and going all the way down. And you can keep in mind that as long as you cut your square nice and straight, you'll want to keep your line as parallel to the edge of the paper as possible. All right, so I'm going to start my line right here. And remember, I'm just making very small, light sketches right now. Normally, I find that if people try to do a very dark, heavy line, or if they try to really rush it, sometimes it gets a little wiggly because it's harder to control. Whereas if you just really take your time, you make small sketches, you can have better hand control. And if you make a mistake, it's a lot easier to erase as well. Okay, there we go. So then there's my line and now, you know, if you need to, you can go back and clean it up. So I'll just make my line a little bit darker. Right, and I really just tried to stay one quarter inch away from the edge of my paper the whole time. There we go, and then I stopped at that mark that I made right here. Right, because you don't want your you don't want your line to go all the way down to the edge of the paper, because next we're going to start sewing this way. Now, of course, as we know, the sewing machine doesn't sew to the side, which means that we would have to turn our fabric. So we're going to do the same with our paper just so that we can get into the habit of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my paper counterclockwise, just like this, so that the line that I just drew is at the very top of my paper now. Every time you turn your page, every time you go on to make a new line, you're going to want to make sure that the last line that you drew is at the very top of the paper. Okay, so now I'm just going to keep repeating the same steps over and over basically until I have a full square around my page. So I'm going to again take my ruler, find, there we go, find one quarter inch, mark a quarter inch up from the bottom, and then mark a quarter inch at that point in from the side. Oh, and it looks like I estimated that fairly well here because my mark that I made is in the right spot. Okay. And now I'm going to draw my line down. Just watching the edge of the paper and also aiming for that dot that I made. And there we go. Alright, so now it's really just the same process over and over. You're going to turn counterclockwise, measure up from the bottom and in from the side, and then draw your line down. And then again, turn to the side, measure up from the bottom and in from the side, and draw your line down. We're really just repeating the same process until we get all the way around. All right, I've got my marks. And again, drawing my line down. Oops. The nice thing about working with pencils, you can always erase if you make a mistake. If 
but I would encourage you to try to do it correctly the first time uh, because you can't erase on a sewing machine. Alright, turning my paper. Making my marks. Quarter inch up, quarter inch in. All right, and here we go again. in here. There we go. Okay. And now finally, this last little bit that's left here, you don't you don't need to measure anything for this one because you're just going to be connecting it down to your starting point. So we're really just closing off the square. There we go. And then making our last back stitch. And so that is one full square done. Now to continue the pattern, um, because as you can see, this pattern is really just squares moving into the center of the page. So now we would make another square on the inside of this square that we just made. So we can think of this new square that we made as our new perimeter, and then that's where we're going to be making all of our measurements from. So to make that nice diagonal, uh, back stitches into the center of the page. We're going to want to start just a little bit below where our first back stitch was. You don't need to measure exactly where it is. You can just kind of eyeball it. And so I'm going to start a little bit lower. And again, I'm going to measure a quarter inch in. There we go. So lining up my quarter inch line with the line that I had drawn before and making a mark. There we go. So now this is going to be my new back stitch and you can see that it's a little bit lower down. And then I'm just going to continue the same process. So exact same as before, measuring a quarter inch, but now I'm going to measure a quarter inch up from the line that I drew here, not the edge of the paper, of course. So from that line, quarter inch up, quarter inch in from the side, again, where I made that line. There we go. And then same process as before, drawing my line down, and now I'm just going to try to keep it as nice and parallel as I can to the first line that I drew. just like that. And so then it's the exact same process every single time. You're going to turn it counterclockwise, measure up from the bottom from the last square that you drew, measure in from the side, both a quarter inch, make that mark, and draw the line down. Turn, measure up quarter inch, measure in quarter inch, draw the line down. Turn, and then do the exact same thing all the way around. All right, so if you follow that process, eventually your page will start to look like this one here, right? And so each time I just dropped where I started my square a little bit lower. And so here's my second one, a little bit lower than the first. My third one is a little bit lower than my second one and so on. So it starts to make this nice diagonal going right across the page here. So if you continue this pattern, 
You'll eventually start to make more and more squares until you get right into the middle section here. This is just a uh, quick example here. So it's not completed. I would really encourage you to continue to make squares until you get a very small one in the center. And you'll know that your uh, lines were nice and parallel and you were keeping everything straight if you get into the middle and your shape is still a square. All right, so that's really your goal. You don't want a rectangle when you get into the middle because then that means that your lines were off somewhere. You really want to aim to have a nice square in the center. All right, so that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you found that helpful. Um, please let me know if you have any questions. Of course, you can comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And good luck with trying out this big square pattern. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.